Good afternoon guys, so I am one happy customer right now, so let me show you what I get to do just right quickly here. See this, uh, see this board right here? See all this right here? I get to do this. Where the drive shaft is, boom. No more steering shake, no more, I shouldn't say steering shake, but no more drive shaft humming or whatever. Um, I'm gonna test it a little bit more, but I rotated it again for the third time. I don't know how, why the third time of rotating it did anything. Um, and doesn't do it. I went, you know, went over 100 in Mexico, and I had no issues, uh, no humming, no nothing. Uh, the only thing I will say, maybe some other people out there can give me some feedback. Um, when you go to shift, and it was doing it before, anyways, too. But when you go to shift, it's almost like a like it's very soft. Like you almost feel like the rear end because there's no rubber bushing there. Like you can feel it, like stopping and then putting it in gear and taking off again. It's very not jerky, I don't know what the, it's very like clunky almost, very metal on metal feeling. I, I guess that's the best way of doing it um, because there's no rubber bushing in between it. So I'm not sure if anyone can give me insight on that, but I'm super happy that at least I can cruise down the highway and it gives me no issues. Um, I do still need to fix the steering shake. Um, I've got a couple other issues. I have some power steering whine. It just, it whines real loud. Um, I'm actually using the non-turbo power steering pump on it. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it whatsoever because um, the power steering one I was going to use from it from the original JDM motor didn't work so I just reused it. I was told they're the same but then I get conflicting information on that too. Some people say they're not the same so I'm not really 100% sure. Um, I'm going to look into a little bit more. Technically, physically they're I guess identical or whatever but maybe internally they're slightly different. Um, because you know, I've had people say they've literally swapped one for another. Um, they've done like two non-turbo ones and made noise. As soon as they put a twin turbo one on it, boom, fix the issue. So hoping that's all it is and I find a used one somewhere because I don't think I need a new new one. I think a used one will be fine. Who knows? But I'm just happy about the drive shaft right now. Um, once again, I'll keep messing with it here. I do need to retighten them down with blue Loctite. I just threw them back in again just to keep testing them because putting blue Loctite them over and over again didn't make sense if I'm not going to keep it in that position or if I'm just going to rip it back out. So I got to get it back up one more time and put blue Loctite in the bolts and it should be good and we're good to go for tuning now. Fuck yes. Also wanted to show you guys quick here. Uh, I'm going to go on a big long detail of how to do this and install this and go over etc. Uh, Nas uh, sent me these. N-O-Z. Uh, yeah. He sent me these for free which is pretty amazing. So these are the headlight rings for stock Toyota headlights from 93 and a half to 96. It will not fit my 97, 98s. He has specific rings for that. Um, but they are actually made of, I believe, steel. I believe these are stainless steel. I don't think they're aluminum. They might be aluminum. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'm going to get a full details, do a full video for these. They're, they're awesome. Everyone knows if you have super headlights, the ring always bubbles. No matter what you do, and you can never get them perfect. So these are metal rings, and they look better than stock, and those should last forever. So... Pretty excited about this, so I can't wait to get these in. I'll go in full detail for you. I'll put the description below for his business and where you can buy these. He actually does headlight refurbishing still. Um, he does a bunch of stuff. He is very detailed. He's going to walk me through it so I can make a step-by-step -step video for you guys and so you can enjoy it. But I also have some other big news for you too. My wife's over here. She's looking like a hot mess right now. But I got, now I just said like I got some like awesome news and stuff. I'm like, oh, hi, baby. Hi. Where's Raven? Hi, baby. Come here, attack dog. Arr, our attack dog and us. So I got awesome news. Uh, I have good friends that work through Toyota um, locally, and everyone keeps talking about the new Supers coming, the new Supers coming. And really? Really? Anyways, so the new Supers coming, and we got confirmation. 100% confirmed from Toyota. It's gonna fucking happen. So I've got 100% confirmation now as she walks away um yeah it's gonna happen it's going to happen it's pretty awesome he's gonna buy me the new supra yay i'm yay! getting the new supra she no, ain't getting shit i'm getting the new supra not gonna happen so i'm pretty excited about this uh i've already talked to a couple of dealerships trying to figure out if i can get one of the first ones like i want one of the first ones i'll pay the stupid amount of money but i i have to have one like I'm hoping it's a limited production thing. I'm hoping it has a V6 twin turbo or, or maybe it'll have a BMW inline six TT motor. I don't know. I don't care. I just want one because I know it's going to have the super badge on it. It's going to be a Toyota. It's not going to be a dumbass Scion. It's going to be awesome. And I 
fucking want to own one and like right now. So I hope it has all the things I want. I hope it has a six speed. I hope it has a true V6 or TT style motor in it. I hope it has a big body to it. I hope it has a cup holder because whoever's stupid and doesn't invent a Supra without a cup holder, boo! So this Supra here doesn't have cup holders. It has an ashtray, but no cup holder. So I get it, especially because we drive a lot. So that would be kind of a nice feature, which pretty much every new car has them now. So it probably will. Um, yeah, I'm like super, super, super stoked right now. I just want to get one and order it already. Um, yeah, I have everything else paid off for the most part. So I can afford it and I want it. Let's make it happen, babe. So I had to take a quick intermission. Had to get me a boot light. Yeah, it's not a Keystone either for once. It's either a Keystone, I got Yingling, I've got Blue Moon. I kind of have like, like a little bit of everything. I just, I like alcohol for the most part. What you guys want to know the fun fact, I didn't really start drinking till like the last maybe two years. Not even probably that long. Like I really never drank. Like I had beer and stuff and I drank growing up, but like not a whole lot. And like just recently have I started to actually drink. I'm 29 now, I'm going to be 30 this year. So just kind of like a fun fact from me, but beer. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked on this whole Toyota Super thing and having a bee fly around my head. Um, I just, I really want one. Like, I've got to own it. Um, I would like to modify it, do everything. I want to be the first one to have it and start just going to town on this thing and just ripping it apart. I want to know how the ECU works. I want to know how the brakes work. I want to see whatever bit of technology they're going to have in this thing and if it's actually going to be as great as he says it's going to be. Um, I just hope it's not a letdown. It's my biggest fear. I hope it's not a giant letdown. Um, even if it's just an automatic, look at the GTR, they started that in 2009. Um, if it has a true dual clutch transmission, I'll be okay with that. Do I want that? I want a true enthusiast car. Yes, is a DSG or a, a dual clutch faster than a manual? Absolutely. But, I don't know. I, 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 I want to enjoy the car at the end of the day. It's kind of like I said with this. I don't want a thousand horsepower. 500 to 600, great. It'll be the funnest car in the world in the back roads. I'll enjoy the shit out of this thing and I won't break all the damn time. Knock on wood. Hopefully I don't. Um, I actually like to, I, I build cars to drive them. So I like to add performance, don't get me wrong. I like to make more noise and like to do this and that and make the car perform better. But it comes to a point where where's your tipping point of like doing it all. Like I want this to go fast and straight line, hit the corners and go well. I, I want my, my mom be able to drive it. And if I get a new Supra, I want it to do the same thing. So say if they come out, say they're 600 horsepower, okay, from the factory. Uh, that, that'd be easy probably to make a thousand out of those or maybe 800 or 900, you know, go there and you know people are gonna say, oh, they can make 15 or maybe they make 2000. Well, I don't need that. Where am I going to fucking use that? Uh, even on the highways around here, they're so fucking congested. How am I going to do that? I don't live, um, in Texas. I don't live in Oklahoma. We don't have like hundreds of miles of nothing. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm in backwoods, Pennsylvania, but I mean, it doesn't take very long to get to the city and there's not many people around here to fucking race. Just saying. So, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I'm pretty stoked. I just want to let you guys know, I, this is not clickbait. This is, this is the truth. Like, I have, like, the messages, the confirmation, like, this is happening. Toyota themselves says yes. And it's not like, well, maybe, no. They're saying yes, 100%. The Toyota Supra is coming, period, end of story. And it's going to have the super, ba super badge on it. So, Toyota Supra Turbo. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty fucking stoked right now. So, what else can we talk about for today since we're kind of over that subject now? Another thing I noticed, people ask me why I keep shooting the back of the car. Well, because since I have natural light now, um, I always pull the car and I guess I could turn around next time I do move it, but I don't feel like just turning around just for the shot. I'm just too lazy for that. But because of the fact that I have natural light now, um, it makes the video quality look better. So I figure why not take advantage of it? And I kind of put the camera at the edge of the garage door and shoot inside. Uh, if I flip it around, uh, if you see some of my old videos, it's like pitch black. Uh, it just looks fucking stupid, like really stupid. So I figured doing it this way makes it look better and works a little bit easier too. Um, another thing guys, with the car being done now, I need to do more in-car videos. I just, I have to figure a better camera setup or some way to maybe even get my Nikon set up inside of it. Um, the, the GoPro picks up too many other noises and when I, I listen to audio quality, maybe it's me being picky, I need your guys' feedback on this, I'm serious. Let me know when you watch some of my older videos and stuff. It just sounds raspy almost, like it doesn't sound clear enough to me. I'm really picky and maybe it doesn't seem like it, but I'm really seriously picky about how the audio quality is, even over a picture. I know it sounds stupid, but like for me, if I can't thoroughly hear someone or if it doesn't come through clear, it really bugs me when I'm watching a video. Maybe that's just me, but I really take... I take a lot of pride in trying to make sure my audio quality is as good as possible. Now it's very hard being in a you know very big echoey garage, 
Um, so I try to keep all the mics and everything as close to me as possible, but you know, you can only do so much sometimes. So I try to make these as best as I can and I need your guys' feedback on that. Um, another thing I want to say, it goes to tuning in four days, four days it goes to tuning. Uh, everything's good now. Drive shaft is now fixed on the car. Uh, just needed to rotate it. I think I talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, yeah, so we should be good to go here, boys and girls, and make some power. Um, I'm saying, well, the tuner has two dynos. He has an all-wheel drive Mustang dyno that's good to like 1,500 wheel horsepower. Then he has an old school, we shouldn't say old school, he just has an older dyna pack that I think is only good to 700 wheel horsepower. So I, as low as my powers, I can use either I, either or or either or. Um, he gave me the option saying which one would you like because that day he only needs one of them used up and it's just going to be me there, going to be me there all day. Um, I pretty much told him I don't care. Um, Mustang Dyno is going to read lower dyno numbers than what a dyno pack is. So it, it's numbers at the end of the day. I don't care as long as the car runs well. That's all I really give a shit about. But the internet tells me that I need to show them how much power I made. So, I mean, a dyno pack will show more power. It'll probably show that I make 600, where a Mustang's probably going to show I make like 500. Like, it's seriously that much of a difference. Um, guy made 650 on a, the Mustang dyno. He took his Super to a dyno jet. Not even a dyno pack, just to a dyno jet. And he made 757 there. 100 more horsepower to the wheels. No tuning, just literally strapped it down and ran it on the dyno. And it made an extra 100 horsepower. They're just truly, at the end of the day, they're a tuning tool to show you where you're at. Um, so, yeah, that is what it is. So, I'm not sure which one. Maybe I should request the Dynapack just so I can say, Yeah, man, I broke 600 horsepower, bruh. Who knows? All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you very much, as usual. Uh, I appreciate everything, guys. I love making these videos and drinking my beer. And, uh, yeah, go down below. Check out my Facebook and Instagram. Uh, my Facebook page is Pure Function Engineering. My Instagram is in, uh, Pure Function underscore. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So time to go drink a beer. Peace.